Hey everyone, this is Triple Play Fantasy Beyond the Analyst Interview Series. I am Zach at FF Chuba Batman. This is episode 28. I am joined by the wonderful Joey at the Joey Wright. He is the analyst and field reporter for Front Yard Fantasy and creator of Starts, Sits, and Salutations. How's it going, Joey? Hey, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. This is really fun. I love the intro video. That was super awesome. Yeah, I believe that Steven Johnson put that together for us. Uh, he's a, he's I love a wizard. Steven Johnson. He's one of my yeah. best buddies in this space. <laughs> yeah, he's great. Uh, so thanks for joining us, Joey. So if you guys have not tuned into the first 27 episodes, please change that. But we are not here to talk about fantasy football takes. I know you got plenty of great ones, Joey, um, but we're still in the off season, And I uh, just want to have some fun getting to know you a little bit more. Um, so like I said, if you guys are watching on YouTube, make sure you like subscribe to the channel. we got lots of great content coming out for you, not just football. And if you're on the football podcast, then make sure you guys are downloading and following that as well. So you don't miss any great episodes and check out those first 27. So Joey, we're going to kick it right off. How did you start playing fantasy football? Uh, so I, I don't have like a super amazing story of how I first started playing fantasy football. I think I just, I had a friend that had mentioned fantasy football and I'm like, Hey, let's try a league. And we started, it was just her and I and like one of those little, uh, just like public Yahoo leagues we joined. Um, and we had a lot of fun with it. So the next year we got all our friends together and that's when it really, really took off for us. And then the league came out. Um, and so that was, you know, having a little bit of entertainment inspiring us was, uh, was pretty fun as well. So that's, that's kind of how it started. And it just, it just got in my blood and love it. I understand. <laughs> now, is that, uh, not the original league, but the one with your friends, is that still going on or is that since, uh, yeah, the golden gnome league, it's been going since 2010. So what, 12 years now. Um, and the first league I played in was 2009. So yeah, it's still going. Uh, we were actually talking last night about, uh, when we're going to have the draft this year. Uh, so I always look forward to it. Uh, it's the, my same friends from high school. Um, my groomsmen at my wedding, we've known each other for over 20 years now and it's kind of what's kept us all together, honestly. So it's pretty great. Now, a lot of people have shared that. That's one of my favorite parts of fantasy football is that uh, no matter where you are, it kind of still brings people together. Like my home league that I commissioned, um, it's like half people from Maryland where I live, including like my dad, who I started playing fantasy football with many years ago. And then half people that I work with at Disney or friends from Florida. So it's a, a good mix of, of my life and it helps me stay in touch with everybody. So uh, what are your league settings for that uh, original home league. So we used to have kickers and we did away with that, um, but it's just a redraft um, one quarterback PPR. Um, and then we actually give point. It's a, would it be a 10th a point for a carry for a running back mm -hmm. or for quarterback, whoever has the carry um, because in the very first season, somebody lost on a kneel down and um, all the while the meltdown was epic by the person that happened to, we were like, ah, we need to do something, probably remedy that. So. Yeah, that, that had to be miserable. Now, was that in the championship or that was just a regular season? It was match? in a regular week, yeah. Oh, okay. It would have been great if it was a championship, but <laughs> yeah. nah, I didn't have in a championship game. Just a regular That's still week. rough. Now, yeah. what is your uh, preferred preferred league setup? You know, I'll play in any kind of league. I'm not a huge dynasty guy, but I'm in enough dynasty leagues, uh, thanks to Jeff Bell, that uh, I, I do like it. Um, but, I mean, it, it's... I do love just a good redraft league. I'll tell you, and I'm not promoting them, but the uh, cut line format that NFCC offers um, is super fun. It's like half best ball for the first, it's like 10 to 12 weeks. And then after that, uh, you set a lineup throughout the playoffs. And I like that cut line format a lot, um, but not as popular, but it's it's a lot of fun. Yeah, the Raz Bowl, right? Yeah, Raz, Raz, Raz Bowl team. has it. And um, they have like money, uh, big money leagues that have uh, that setting too. So yeah. It definitely adds a little wrinkle to it, a little more strategy. Always fun. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. And do you mind sharing the story of uh, for everyone of how we met? Oh, yeah. So um, what was it? Has it been two or three years now? Two seasons? Ago? Uh, was it I guess 2020 be, season? It was a 2020 season, yeah. So about Yeah, so um, we both are, I would say, avid listeners of the CBS Fantasy Football Today podcast. Mm -hmm. And um, it was coming up. It was my 10th year listening to that podcast. And um, they have the podcast league and i wrote in to get a to get a spot wrote a love letter to dave richard hey dave if you're watching this probably not though you never watch my stuff um and uh they just i got to run a team with dave it was super fun and then i believe you correct me if i'm wrong you won the satellite uh to get into the league yeah the, the listeners only league in 2019 yep. yep 
And so that's how you got. And then I think the first time we corresponded was probably in the draft room chat. Yeah, um, definitely. Yeah. It was a fun draft. Have, <laughs> what'd you say? It was a fun draft. Yeah, I, I, I wish that I, um, I had the relationship I do now with Dave because I would have, I would have said a few things in the draft. But at any time he's like, "Should we take this guy?" I'm like, "Uh huh, uh huh." <laughs> um, so, <laughs> uh, yeah, but I, you know, I think that's how we met. And then neither of us were in the industry at that time. And then uh, from there, I, you know, two years later, here we both are. <laughs> yeah, it's been a lot of fun. And I had to wear my, my Scott Fishbowl uh, live draft shirt today because uh, now this is an evergreen show. Um, but before we recorded, it's now uh, two weeks ago, we got to draft live together in Orlando. So it was actually the first time we met in person. Um, but that mm -hmm. was a really cool experience getting to meet so many people and, and doing a Scott Fishbowl draft live. Absolutely. I think it was the first time I've cursed at you then because uh, you were sniping me quite a bit in that draft. Um, <laughs> it was fun. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was a very fun experience. If anybody yeah. gets to do Scott Fishbowl live drafts next year, please do it. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, It sounds like Scott's definitely doing live drafts again for Scott Fishbowl 13. So if you were able to take advantage of it and you're listening right now, one, sign up. You can't get in Scott Fishbowl 13 without signing up. It's open. And uh, <laughs> definitely try to do the live drafts once those get announced. Uh, and then, so what inspired you to start creating fantasy football content? Cause like you said, when we met two years ago, neither of us were creating content yet. No, I mean, I had, I had played for over 10 years and I'd had so much fun and I was just looking for something different. And, um, I joined that Raz Bowl league, uh, and was doing really well in it. And they were writing this like weekly recap of what was going on in the Raz Bowl. And I started really engaging with the writers at Raz Ball and, the community that was you know reading that and i not to say i got a following with them because that wasn't that at all but you know it was kind of like uh, everyone was either rooting for me or rooting against me and a lot of people were rooting pretty much against me um but then there was this video of my daughter that came out um and she kind of became like my little mascot uh, at the end of the season uh the team at rasball reached out to me and they said hey we had a lot of fun with you and uh do you write it all and it turns out i used to be a film critic and sent them a couple of little samples and they said okay well once the season starts let's get you writing for us and that's how i got my first job that's awesome and look at you now yeah <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a really cool story and i i don't think people realize that how how common that is in in the industry for people starting up of either you just reach out to somebody you want to write for or someone just reaches out to you and is like hey do you want to give us a try and you kind of get the itch you get hooked and then yeah you start writing for more teams and you just keep growing. So that's a great story. I appreciate that. And I know your other passion besides fantasy football is wrestling, I believe. Correct. Yeah. I, I love her wrestling and few people ever ask me about it. So it's kind of fun. I'm part of a podcast. Um, and so it's, it's, it's fun to talk about wrestling. So where does that passion come from for wrestling? Um, so it, it's interesting because my love of wrestling really came in two parts. When I was a kid, I love the WWF content, you know, with Ra Rowdy Roddy Piper is like my favorite professional wrestler of all time. Um, cut the greatest promos. Uh, he was a smaller guy. He wasn't one of the bigger guys, but he used his mouth to kind of get ahead. Um, and I was a small kid. And uh, so I learned really quick. If I'm funny, um, I can make friends because I moved around a lot as a kid. Um, so I think honestly, seeing Roddy Piper as a kid is really what got me hooked in pro wrestling. And it's just fun. Um, you know, it gets a bad rap, but... You know, when I was a kid, there was nothing better on Saturday. You know, I think it was at noon on NBC. They'd have uh, the Saturday day main event and uh, just super fun to watch. Um, and I never liked Hulk Hogan as a kid. Um, then, like, when I got my 20s, I got out of it. I just stopped watching it. I, you know, I started watching UFC a lot. Um, and my real love of pro wrestling really came in the day I got married. Um, I was nervous, couldn't go to sleep. Um, I just woke up at like, I want to say I fell asleep at like midnight, woke up at like three or four o'clock in the morning. And one of my friends that was big into pro wrestling was like, hey, man, you should check out uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling. Uh, it, it's really cool. It's it's very different. And I fell in love with pro wrestling again that day. Uh, There's a guy named Kenny Omega, uh, his first wrestler I saw back, had a match. And uh, I think he's the greatest pro wrestler in the world right now. Um, he's injured, but he'll be back soon. Uh, but yeah, the, the Japanese pro wrestling style, it's very different. And uh, it just, I fell in love with it. That's really cool. And now you're based out of Central Florida and pro wrestling is pretty much home in Central Florida. Do you get to go to a lot of matches or, or not so much? Yeah. So um, when NXT was doing the road shows, um, 
I was going to a lot of the NXT shows because a lot of the guys that I was um, really seeing on the New Japan product were starting to come over to NXT, which is the developmental for WWE. Um, and Triple H, who's now the executive vice president as of like Friday, <laughs> he just got uh, re-promoted. Uh, he was running NXT at the time and put together, I think, like a five-year run uh, along with New Japan for Wrestling that has been unmatched in wrestling for a very long time. Um, so I go, I went to a lot of those um, those little, they called them the Coconut Loop. I went to a lot of those little house shows. That's awesome. And now mm-hmm. you said, uh, Rod, is it Rowdy, Rowdy Piper? Yeah, Rowdy, Rowdy, Rowdy Piper. Awesome. So he's your favorite all-time wrestler, or is there another one? All-time. Yeah, he, uh, he was no one... And I, I people will agree with me on this. No one could cut a promo like Roddy Piper. You know, Ric Flair's incredible. He's probably the greatest pro wrestler ever. But even Ric Flair will tell you Piper was the best on the microphone. And it's it's super entertaining when you've got a guy that is so funny, so quick, so witty. Uh, so I just love Roddy Piper, which is funny because now when I watch wrestling, I don't necessarily care about what people say. I, I really want to see like the in-ring stuff. So yeah. So would you say it's like kind of like 50-50, like the physical match itself and like then like being able to cut promos and, and that trash talk? Or is it, would you say it's I mean, more to than... succeed in pro wrestling, you, you have to be able to talk or they stick somebody with you that can talk for you. Um, I mean, if you look at somebody like Brock Lesnar, um, Brock Lesnar is incredible. He's a fantastic athlete. There's no doubt about that. Um, and he had a de- he had a good career. I mean, there's nothing wrong with his career before they stuck Paul Heyman with him, but once they put Paul Heyman with Brock Lesnar, it was a whole other level. Um, so, you know, it is 50, 50, but you know, there's, if you get a good manager, there's, there's a little cut around. There you go. All about balance. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And we talked about us kind of coming up in the space a little bit and, and you starting out over the last couple of years. So there's a lot of new content creators now, or even people thinking about starting in the fantasy space. Um, do you have any advice for those new content creators as they first start out? Yeah, I the best advice I was ever given, I'm just going to re-give. Uh, find your differentiator. Find what makes you different, what makes you love something, what makes you passionate about it, and do that. Um, for me, I, I was writing for Razzball, and I let me tell you, I loved it. I loved writing the article every week, but there's a lot of waiver wire articles. There's a ton of them. And um, it wasn't really until I joined the team at FYF uh, with front yard fantasy. And, um, I said to our, uh, founder and creator JL, um, I said, Hey, I've got this idea for like a show. Like I kind of want to like, just go and like answer starts it questions, but don't do it like in my normal place. I want to go out like to places and do it. And, um, I didn't even really know what it was at the time. And it's turned into starts and salutations, um, which is kind of like, it's turned into kind of like a Mr. Rogers knockoff, I guess is the way to explain it. I usually go out into nature and um, give starts this advice and do really corny jokes. Uh, but I love it. It's fun. It's, I mean, it's very grounded and kind of like the SNL kind of sketch comedy kind of stuff, which I grew up loving as well. Um, and that's where I found um, like my true passion for doing something in fantasy football that not a lot of people are doing. Some people are doing some really cool and fun, creative stuff. Um, but I think I found something that it made me a little different and it's kind of become like my calling card. Like when we went to, when we were at the, uh, the draft in Orlando for Scott fishbowl and I walked in and people were like, Oh, hi. Oh, hi. And it's like, it was kind of cool to hear that, you know? Um, so yeah, if anybody's starting in the space, you know, work hard, but really look to find what makes you different. And it might not be a show. It might just be a writing style. Um, you know, when I was with Asball, I was doing movie introductions and a lot of people, reached out to me and they're like, Hey, we love your little movie bits in there. You know, that's really fun. So find something that makes you different, kind of stick with that. Um, and really kind of lean into it a little bit. That's great advice. And you know, you're doing something right when you have your own uh, catchphrase that people recognize for you <laughs> for better or worse. <laughs> hey, at least it's a good catchphrase. It, no, it, it is. It is. It's funny. <laughs> I've kind of noticed it, um, pop up in a lot more places than, um, you know, I, Nothing in the world is truly original. It's really not. Um, and I, everyone's like, where'd you get the Ohio from? And I'm like, I really don't know. And then one day I was sitting down watching Blues Clues with my kid. And Steve Walk, or it's not Steve. I what's, forget the good new guy's name. He's the one that plays guitar. New, we'll call really. him New Steve. <laughs> new Steve, yeah. He walks in and goes, oh, hi. And I was like, oh, my God, is that where I got it? Um, so He yeah. stole it from you, obviously. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. But now I see it everywhere. It was on The Boys the other day, and I was like, 
it's catching on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's becoming a thing. That's awesome. But no, that, that is great advice. Um, I think it is important. Like a lot of people say, oh, it's an oversaturated market. Sure. Um, but everyone's looking for great advice. And if you're yeah. providing great advice in a fun way that, like you said, makes yourself differentiate your unique, like there's not an oversaturation of uniqueness. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm not doing this to, at this point in my life to, for a living, like I have a, I have a job outside of this. Um, so whatever I do, I need to honestly be having fun because if I'm not having fun, like, what am I doing it for? I want to help people. Yeah. But let's not be miserable people. Let's say you know, the world is, is kind of grim as it is um, already. Um, so yeah, I, anytime I go, I mean, I'd shoot it with my best friend. Um, so we go out and we laugh our butts off and I didn't no, know if I could cuss. Great. I almost cursed. So <laughs> no, it's all good. We, we got the okay. explicit tag on here. We're, nice. We're okay. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> and so that was the, the last of my, we'll call them the serious questions. I have some uh, rapid fire questions. If you're game, let's go. All right. So I had, I've been trying to theme these more often with my guests as I can. Um, and since we both drafted in the Orlando live Scott fishbowl draft, as we said, like five times now, uh, for those aren't paying attention, <laughs> uh, we did that at Coronado Springs resort on Disney property. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to make this Disney themed for that. So what is your favorite Disney or Pixar animated movie? Um, so if you look behind me, you can see I've got tons of films. These are all films are not books. Some people say they're books. Um, and there is a Pixar movie that I saw. I believe in 2008, it came out and blew me away. And it combined a Charlie Chaplin movie and 2001 A Space Odyssey. And I was in. And I, Wally, uh, while I just watched it the other day with my kids again. And I never get tired of it. Um, it's so witty. It's so cute. It's so endearing. Um, and it's, I mean, it's good sci-fi, too. Um, and I think it has stood the test of time with the way that, you know, we're all kind of addicted to our screens in a way. And Wally really, you know, it, it hit that on the head when I, we, people kind of realized it. But man, it, you're watching Wally now. It's a little it's a little too self-aware. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is a little concerning now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> good choice. Um, so what is your favorite alcoholic beverage at Epcot? Oh, boy. Um, I, I've had many of drinking around the world days at Epcot. I actually don't drink anymore, sadly. But uh, when I did at Epcot, nothing for me. Um, I, I like a good start. Like, let's start it off on a, on a good note. And um, while it's not the official start, because I would always start in Canada, um, right after Canada is uh, is the UK. And uh, it's like the Royal Crown, I believe it's called. Mm -hmm. Is that what the... Yeah. No, it's the um, Rosen, Rosen Crown Pub. Rosen Crown Pub, yeah. Go in there and, and having a pint of whatever was on tap usually i would get a guinness why i would awesome. get a guinness in the beginning i don't know but you know <laughs> just that atmosphere um i'm a huge footy fan i'm a big liverpool supporter um so that's the closest i really ever get to uh being in like a, a nice english pub so that, that's part of the atmosphere but you know nothing beats a good beer so <laughs> i can i can appreciate that choice uh so would you rather go on a magic carpet ride with aladdin or fly with peter pan to neverland um Probably the magic carpet ride because in a way I've already flown with Peter Pan a little bit. And uh, so, you know, let's get a little, a little differentiate in, in the world. <laughs> Fair enough. I, I threw that question uh, in on purpose. And you uh, thought I would say Peter Pan, but uh, no, no, I'd, I'd go on the magic carpet ride. But then again, you could, if you're flying, you're controlling yourself. Um, but then you never get to grow up. Yeah, they both have their options, but I'll take the magic <laughs> carpet ride. Fair enough. See, some people are like, "There's a, there's something inside joke here that yeah. I'm not getting, and we're not going to talk about it because we're we're going to keep it at." No, nah, I was I was us, a good but... friend of Peter Pan's. I'll just say it. I'll put it that way. I was a good friend of Peter Pan's. So. Perfect way to put it. And yeah. would you rather stay in the Cinderella Castle suite for one night only, or stay in a Polynesian Village Resort bungalow over the water for an entire week? So I love this question, and it 100 depends on who I'm with. If I'm just with my wife, I want the week. I want the, I want the, you know, it's Polynesian resort right over the water for the week with my wife, but got my kids with me. I want to stay in a castle. Like let's, let's have fun. So. No, I, I understand that. Yeah. Well, one day I will probably never stay in the castle suite, but I would love to tour it. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I've, I've eaten stories. at the um, restaurant that they have there. Oh Inside yeah. The the Cinder resort table. Mm -hmm. Nice. And then my last question for you. What is your favorite ride at Walt Disney World? Oh, man. You know, uh, I'm going to say Haunted Mansion. Um, it changed. We we became annual pass holders in 2019. 
And I think before that, I would say Pirates of the Caribbean and whatnot. But, um, you know, once you have kids, Disney, the whole perception of it changes for you. And riding Haunted Mansion with my kids, uh, or actually my youngest has still not been to Disney uh, through the pandemic. We have not gotten back since then. Um, but anytime I took my oldest daughter on Haunted Mansion, it was always super fun. So That's a classic for me. That was my yeah. favorite ride as a kid. So I always appreciate that. I've been going to do a little backstage tour of it as well. So Oh, uh, wow. Great classic ride. So I, I really like that that pick for you. Um, so that was the last of my rapid fire questions. I, I think you uh, hit it out of this world, if you will. Um, ah, thank you. <laughs> there we go. Uh, so again, I appreciate you coming on, Joey, and sharing a little bit about you. Um, it was great to talk to you. Can you just tell everyone where they can find you and all of your great work that you do? Yeah, so um, I'm on Twitter at the Joey Wright. Uh, so the Joey Wright on Twitter. Uh, and pretty much any other social media that there's out there, it's the Joey Wright. Um, I work exclusively for Front Yard Fantasy right now. Um, so that's where you'll find Stark Sits and Salutations. Uh, we'll be doing the office hours uh, this season twice a week. Um, I'll be on one day. I'm not sure if it'll be the Tuesday or the Thursday uh, episode, but I'll be on there at least once a week this coming season. Uh, Front Yard Fantasy, I'm on the FanDuel show that we do on Fridays every now and then. Um, so, yeah. I'm just over at Front Yard Fantasy right now. So loving it, though. It's, I love those guys over there. That's a great team. That's awesome. And like I said at the top, this is Triple Play Fantasy. So make sure you go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's not just football. We got baseball, basketball. We actually talk about movies. As Joey was saying, we talk about food. Uh, we got it all covered there. So make sure you go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss any great content there. And also, if you're listening in on the podcast uh, where any podcast is found, make sure you're following and downloading as well. A uh, great way to support the team. And you don't want to miss any of these great episodes. Like I said, this was episode 28. So make sure you go check out those first 27 episodes as well. Um, I hope you enjoyed this episode with Joey. And thank you again, Joey, for your time. And have a great one, everyone. Thank you.